flashing lights and screaming kids, this is all about the fun of the fair. All at 187th scale. So let's get started. The heart of this model is a Fala flipper. It's like a merry-go-round that goes up and down and you spin round and round in cups whilst it's doing it. So, of course, like all kit, you get it out, you read the instructions and you organise everything so you're off to a good start. Whilst the kit comes with a 16 volt AC motor to make it go up and down, if you want to light it, you can either buy their kit or do it yourself. A large proportion of time is spent cutting apart pieces with nippers, tidying them up with even better nippers and then filing bits flat where there's a nub remaining. Then I just followed the instructions, cut it all out, drill a few holes, clean it all up, and finally you can start assembling it all. The 16 volt motor rotates a cam which makes it go up and down and it also turns this spring which attaches at both ends and makes the flipper spin round in a circle as well as going up and down. All very clever except mine wouldn't go down. I got in touch with Fala and they said it needed the weight of all the cups and everything else before it would work properly. So I had no choice but to leave it getting stuck and starting and stopping a lot until I'd built everything. And that wasn't gonna be until I'd painted it. And by then it would be much, much harder to get at this mechanism. I assembled everything else that needed gluing and just finished sanding the final parts. However, before I started painting, I wanted to do something about this backdrop. So I decided instead of just using the flimsy card, I'd use this thicker styrene. I glued it in place. I was worried being thicker that nothing would fit after this, but surprisingly enough, everything just did. So I assembled it as per the instructions. I made a decision early on not to use the stickers, partly because they're really, really hard to get in the right place. To get rid of any dust and grease from all the handling and my fingers, I washed my parts in an ultrasonic cleaner with a bit of washing up liquid. I mounted all the parts on bamboo sticks so I could paint them. All the parts got a coat of primer, Mr. Surfacer 1000. It's a lacquer, so it sticks, which is important because there's moving parts. Any metallics, which is about most of the kit really, got gloss black all clad to act as a base coat for the metallic layer. The cups on the spinning area got all clad pale gold. The flipper centre bit got an ice yellow by Vallejo. The cups were gloss pink, purple and green from Tamiya. The seats were blue and almost everything else was all clad aluminium. I sprayed it here behind the LEDs in the hope that it would reflect back and give a little bit more light out. All the metallics got an aqua gloss top coat to protect them. Removing the marks and painting are the two most important things you can do to make a plastic kit look really good. It's really satisfying to put it all together. All those little pieces soon build up into little cups and to be honest everything else was more or less built so it really was just the cups at this point and then I had to hand paint a few details and I used double-sided sticky tape to stick the card with the flipper design apparently flipper means pinball in German so it's based on a pinball machine it's not my favorite artwork but it fits and that's the important thing but now the bit I've been putting off lighting the more I built this the more I realised how small everything was. I'd painted these discs because I knew that the bulb areas were quite proud and I could just sand them back and clean them up and they would work well. For the rest of the LEDs, I used Blender to design something I could 3D print to hold them following the pattern that was in the kit. I printed them in clear resin so the light will shine through painted them in the right colour paint and then used my finger, turned out to be the best thing, to wipe off the paint in the areas that I want to be lit. I had to come back at the end on the flipper because the lights were shining through between the writing and I painted black and then painted quite a few layers of white. But these pieces are titchy, they are so small, 
And even though I'd allowed for the LEDs to go into them, somehow when I came to solder them in place, I just really struggled. So I had the bright idea to use this LED string. It's USB powered, it does flashing colour lights, it's perfect for a fun fair. Or is it? To be honest, it was a nightmare. All the LEDs are 10 centimetres apart, so you have to cut each LED out and resolder it. And when I did that, some of them stopped working, some of them changed colour. Um, the bonds between it where I soldered were quite easy to then pull the LEDs apart or break when I was twisting to try and get them into the very small channels they had to go into. Long story short, the whole thing just didn't work. So out came plan B. It's important to be flexible. And these are flexible LEDs. They're brilliant. I just had to maybe sand a little bit out of one or two of the thinner pieces of this, slot them through, and I was done. I mean, it took a day, but that's what I basically did. Once I was sure everything fitted well, I know I've got some tails sticking out, you can see them on the left there and on the right as well. But once I was sure everything fitted, I super glued it all in place and just left those little mini clothes pegs to hold it. I filled the top with Vallejo putty to help with the light and any gaps and left it to dry for 24 hours before sanding it all smooth. I use Neo Pixels for the front lights and the flipper light. You need an Arduino for these. And once I'd wired them up, I wired all of the Arduino and spent quite a bit of time writing code to get that to work. Well, Googling other people's code and reusing it. And then I painted everywhere that leaked light with black paint to try and stop light leaks. It took two or three coats of the ice yellow to go over and I put it on really thickly as well, which I don't like doing because then the brush strokes show. But I needed it to look yellow and black is a nightmare to paint over. By now we're on to the home stretch. So it was acetate in the windows, barriers glued in place, the wiring threaded through, and then I glued the lights in too. And time to light up the roundabout part. I honestly had never considered putting LEDs in this and fair play to anyone who has, I have seen them online. I use neon gel pens. So first I painted white so that they would show and then I just went round and did a pattern with neon gel pens. Now these glow under UV light, all except the blue one, which doesn't seem to like to glow. So what I had to do for that was go over it with some invisible ink pens. Now certain invisible ink pens are pens that you write, they're clear and they glow with UV light. So when all was done and I'd gone through that, thankfully it's shone. Now you do need to put a UV torch on it to get the effect, but it is an easy way of having fluorescence without actually having a light source. I used pale and dark gray enamel washes to bring out the details and everything. Um, it just makes parts stand out. All that was missing were the revolving cups and to put some power on. Well, the show's over, folks. I hope you enjoyed the ride. 
If you did, consider subscribing, hitting the bell button so you know when the next video is up. And if you really want to support me, I have a Patreon and a YouTube channel membership. Just hit join down below or follow the links for Patreon. Anyway, see you next time.